Hello, I wanted to do a video, a uh, quick look at the latest update in Stardust. Uh, they put this video together, uh, which shows off some of the new features. Uh, mostly the thing that I kind of wanted to talk about was this uh, volume uh, meshing that they're doing with VDBs. Uh, it's pretty amazing. I haven't fully learned it. I'm still kind of playing and experimenting and figuring it out, but uh, so far it's pretty rad and I just kind of wanted to like say like oh man there's a new build we should look at it it's really cool can't wait to see what people make and let's look at the presets and an animation that i was putting together the other night and then we can kind of just uh i can talk you through the basics of it of how it's working and then uh so this is what i made the other uh day i think i can hit just preview on this video uh, it's a simple little uh point emitter emitting outwards with some turbulence and some auxiliary nodes to create the trails and this is the new part that we're uh, using these new volume nodes to mesh and then create a surface along those. So let's start off, like I said, with their, let's create a new comp here. Let's make a new solid. Add Stardust. We have our basics and let's go to their presets. I think their presets are always a great place to start. Um, they kind of really inform you to kind of what's possible and how they're looking at the setup. So we're just going to look at the spheres one. You can see here you can do booleans. You can kind of use noise to cut through, which is pretty interesting. And then I'm just going to look like the basic one. So let's do replace, bring that in. And it looks kind of boring off the default. So let's just grab an HDRI and drop that in here and go up to our emitter settings or our starter settings render environment and let's add that that at least gives us some surface information based on their material settings so cool as you can see it's kind of like it's, it's pretty fast i think i could ram preview this and it would play back pretty fast and for meshing a particle system inside after effects it's pretty amazing uh and let's kind of step through and see what's happening so uh oops i didn't mean to jump so far that's fine like I said, there's a, your basic emitter that you would use, point. They're doing just kind of a default uh, amount per second, uh, 100 speed. Uh, you can use any of these settings. They, you know, they're all fair game. Uh, their particle, they have set to model with a life seconds of five. And I don't think they're affecting, no, size of real life or opacity, leaving that alone. The rotation, uh, nothing going on here that's different. So this is set to model and that's feeding into the volume here. And so the volume, there's different uh, actions. So there's create, filter, offset, noise, and add vec. And so the first one that they're putting up here is create and you could uh boolean this as in their demo as you saw like if you had what's cool is they made it so that there's this like second input if you notice when you mouse over this so you could just create a model um let's say let's make that a primitive uh sphere maybe 15 25 how big until we see it They're starting to see it, so 250. Oh, there you go. So there's our sphere. If we go further back into our simulation, you can see that it's intersecting now. So now that there's this uh, second little node here, you could drag that and connect it to a model, and you could pick how that is operating. So right now, I set that to add, so it's taking that base uh, spherical primitive and adding to it. You could also do difference, which would cut through it. Intersection, which would give you the difference between the two, which is kind of interesting. So kind of creating like a uh, enclosed surface. And yeah, so that's that. I'm gonna take this so we can just look at the base again. Uh, so that's that. And then your voxel size and your voxel half size are definitely gonna be the two values that you play with a lot. And this is gonna be dependent upon uh, your particle size. Here they've set it to 50. Um, you know, the lower this goes, the higher, uh, 
in calculations, you know, more calculative intensity, or just blah, 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 <laughs> more uh, intense to calculate that that is going to be on your processing power there. So uh, be wary of that. Um, and then smooth, if you were getting, if you had, you know, like a, if you were using a noise or, or something and you were getting kind of surface irregularities, you could use the smooth here. Uh, there's another place to do that. There's the mesh properties, which you can also do turn on like adaptive here if you wanted to have it kind of uh, have the actual mesh uh, faces vertices kind of being calculated per frame. So it kind of is trying to do it per frame to be fed the how dense your mesh is. Sorry, let's try to figure out how to say that. Uh, yeah, so there's that. And that's kind of like your base settings, right? So you would kind of come in here, plug in your voxel size, figure out how it's uh, you how tight you want it around your particles and figuring out how much it's smoothing and then the uh, second step they are using an uh, offset which does what you think it would I guess in typical VDBs this is commonly known as like a uh, offset or a road where you're kind of eating away at the mesh or expanding it here they're eating at it a little bit negative 10 we could increase this to 80 and you could see how it is trying to offset from the mesh and connect to the nearest point. So you're kind of controlling that surface amongst those different um, points. In this case, uh, how tight it's drawing that surface is my kind of understanding of this. Again, I'm learning. I just wanted to do a video to kind of share. I thought this was cool. Uh, so that's kind of plus value. That's zero. And back to their value which is negative 10 you can see it kind of starts to fill in some of those holes uh, so that's offset and then um, I'm sorry right, here's your two types you know your open close dilate your road so you could switch that and get different settings there there's kind of eroding into it so my bad I was explaining that a little bit wrong but again like I said <laughs> I haven't learn this fully I'm just excited about it and just kind of wanted to show the basics uh, the next node they have down here is a filter so they're just using this to kind of smooth out that overall surface uh, to get more of a smooth quality across it and then they're feeding that into a model which is set to file uh, which kind of since we're not uh, setting a model up here normally if you were doing this you kind of would attach a model to this particle but we're just saying that it's a model which it's getting the default I would guess of a sphere um, the other way that I've seen them set this up is by connecting a model up here so you can kind of define what that initial shape shape is so you could do primitive I think maybe maybe I'm wrong again uh, if we go to our volume you can see disable source is on and so if I uncheck that it should show you the mesh and the uh, source particle still. Uh, let me disconnect this for a second. Here. Oh, there's our sphere. Maybe we're just really big. So if I set this back to cube. You can see there, since they're black. Um, yeah, so my understanding is that if you mesh that, that it would mesh based on this model type. But apparently I have that wrong. So, hey, we're learning together. <laughs> so apparently that doesn't matter there. Interesting. All right, well, we'll figure that one down the line. But for now, we're going to go and move past that. So that's that. And then the material is at the very bottom and you have your different, your basically your different uh, material settings. The things that are new here is there are some, a couple of, well, I haven't talked about, you know, 1.3 or 1.4, but we have uh, a different reflection metal settings in here. So now we have the ability to control uh, the reflectors amount, the environment amount and specular amount uh, reflectors is like if you had a floor plane under this uh, the floor plane could reflect your mesh or your particles above so you can control and vice versa so you can control how much the visibility of each of those is happening there's a new refraction 
which is under, if you switch this from solid to transparent, that's kind of where that comes into play. There's a uh, subsurface, which is really cool for, again, under solid. If you're doing solid, that, that works the best there. And you have some scatter density. And of course you would need to enable that under your render settings at the top. There's subsurface, turn that on if you're playing with that. And uh, emissive, I think has been there for a while. Uh, bump, uh, now there's a uh, normal slash bump. So it will understand if you're feeding it a grayscale image or if you're feeding it an actual normal map, which is really cool. Uh, transparent material, again, effect if you're doing transparent, it affects the actual opacity. This is new here, this normal uh, affects opacity, which is really cool. And then shadow catcher, if you just wanted this to only catch shadows, you could enable that and it wouldn't uh, render the actual surface. Um, apart from that, I think everything else is pretty similar, really cool. And then the last thing that I wanted to go over was, oh, actually under the volume, uh, let's see, let's see if I can create a new fractal and pre-comp that, go in there, oops, apply a fractal noise. Let's just do like, I don't know, strings, yeah. And then maybe let's just tint this kind of like a weird color combo just so we can see it. Cool. And then let's go back up. And then our comp in here, let's turn that off. Uh, what I just wanted to show is how it's texturing, which is interesting. So I could come down to here to the model and I could say, or my material rather, and diffuse. I could set this to my fractal and set color from particle to zero. So now we're getting the texture completely from our texture map, which you can see it looks really tiny. Uh, what I've noticed is there's, so on this main volume of the create node up here, there is under mesh, there is, oh, sorry, in our model, model properties, texture mapping. This is new. Uh, here we can kind of, uh, this was, I mean, this was here before, but now we have a couple of different settings, I guess I should say. So here we can do uh, spherical and it'll map our texture spherical, or you could do planar if you had something that you wanted to do from a direction. Uh, but model, you know, it's trying to put it across the surface depending on how it's deforming. Uh, what I've noticed uh, affects this the most is the actual voxel size. So if I increase this to like double, I mean, we're going to get a weird surface but oh it's because of my particle type that i had set to cubes earlier showing through uh let's set that to disable the source there we go so i've noticed that the larger this number is the bigger the texture is so that's going to be kind of interesting to kind of find the balance between how big your particles are and that texture um, again, this is something I haven't explored a lot, so it's something that I need to kind of figure out more of, but I kind of noticed that was the only way to get a texture that I thought felt sizable and controllable versus having something that was uh, much really small. So maybe there's going to be some tweaks there to figure that out, but that's kind of the basics of what's happening there. I just kind of wanted to explain it in case you were trying to play with putting textures on that. Uh, so that's what hap is happening there. And again, this would also affect, so let's make this back to 30 real quick so we can kind of see our texture. If we also drop down to our material and set that to, say, to the emission channel, you could see, there you go, how it's uh, affecting. Same thing. So let's go back in here, set, let's just leave this to black, and maybe let's scale this down to... Or scale it up maybe to 250. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Well, there you go. So you can kind of see what's happening there. So, yeah, those two things are connected, and that's kind of dependent upon your mesh, which I'm guessing is also going to be dependent upon how many particles you're actually emitting and a lot of the variables. But yeah, that's kind of the basics. Um, same thing if we jump back over to mine, you can see, you know, like I said, uh, emitter. I was connecting my model to my emitter. Uh, before, like I said, I, that's how I was getting the shapes that I wanted. Uh, auxiliary, particle, transform, turbulence to affect it. And then, you know, same thing where I was doing a volume to create. 
a volume and you know this this one goes kind of slow because i had my voxel size at five which is you know really small uh that's just how i was testing it out and kind of got the look that i liked and then there is um i was doing a filter which i was trying to noise but i the results were crazy so i switched to filter which is just kind of smoothing it out a little bit and oh well actually well that's another thing but and then model and then material and I had two different materials set up in here. I think I have one that was like a subsurface. There, there you go. One's like just a generic subsurface material and one that was kind of this refractive, crazy looking one with some of those new settings, the refraction and transparency. And it's helping getting this kind of additive overlays and using, actually, so if I go to the uh, material and we look at this setting, let me take a screen grab here. And then we look at this normal effects opacity. If I turn this off, we can kind of see the difference that that is doing. So basically using the normals, uh, we're able to kind of detect the edges and almost create like a Fresnel for the opacity rather than just a generic across the board opacity, which also affects our, how our subsurface and our refraction is kind of affecting the surface. But it's pretty interesting. Uh, here it is all the way up. I think I picked 78 to kind of get a nice in between, still have some information on the uh, surfaces faces that were pointing towards us and yeah that's kind of it that's kind of how I landed at this I mean I think I also had some volumetric lights that I was playing with but turned those off um, oh so the other thing I was gonna last thing <laughs> this quickie is a 20 minute video so quick uh, emitter under emitter or actually under here about the top so as I'm playing this through it is a cache I have come up here to the volume cache settings and so I ran it once kind of like the physics which also I haven't done a video on but the physics you can have this off and it would you know just every time you're playing through it's meshing and and dealing with it or if you set it to on as it as you're playing through it's saving cache files to the same location as where your file is saved so wherever the this location is there is going to be a folder there that's start as cache and then once you've cached it all the way through, you've run previewed it, you can press freeze and then it'll just use that data and not recalculate it every time, which, you know, expedites the process of, you know, doing this. So then once you have it frozen, then you could kind of come in and dial in your materials or your lighting. But once you have your mesh there, you know, I would suggest getting your mesh to where you like it and then going in and, and tweaking on a level of the kind of details of that. Um, and last but not least, um, this offset that I was doing if I crank this up I thought this looked really cool oh again so I set this to freeze so that's not gonna affect it so if I turn this back to on we should get an update in our viewport now there you go and then let me switch back materials to this uh, other surface so we can see the actual surface detail uh, but subsurface is on and that's kind of heavy. So I'm going to turn that off. There you go. So I thought that was cool. This kind of creates uh, playing with that offset. You can kind of get it to almost look like a sheeter from like real flow where you're getting it to draw these wider connection points between all these single threads. Uh, so that's really cool. So definitely there's a lot to play with a lot to take in um, as I figure this out better and get better with it. I'll try to make a better tutorial to walk you through all the settings. Uh, in the meantime, on their website, they always have under support, there is a user guide. And I do suggest, you know, looking at their information. It's always the best detailed information since they're the ones who make it. Uh, they have a great understanding of what all these uh, sliders and buttons do. So if you come in here, you can kind of see, you know, how they're intending some of these things to be used. Uh, create, you know, kind of explains like the different modes, filter, offset noise, and you know, an advect, which I didn't look at, but um, so yeah, always use them as a great resource for what, you know, these things specifically mean. And yeah, in the meantime, I'll keep playing and hopefully figure out some things, but uh, share with me if you make anything cool. I think people are gonna be making some amazing stuff with this. In their videos and in their presets they've already started to kind of crack open what you can do with that so yeah all right that was my not so quick video on this new 1.5 
Uh, catch you soon, and thanks for watching as usual.